Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor. I'm a Sony Imaging Ambassador and I'd like to take the opportunity to talk to you about one of the three major controls for exposure. Now many of you will have heard of the exposure triangle. Now it's the aperture and shutter speed that control the basic look of the image, whether it's controlling depth of field or subject blur. But ISO is the third control that we have. Now before I go any further, I just would like to clear up that some people refer to this as ISO. Some people uh, use it as an acronym ISO. Now it's a standard set by the International Organization of Standards. So one would think if it was an acronym it would be IOS. This has led many to believe that it is not an acronym. It is actually a word. Now that word is isodynamos, which is a Greek word for equivalence. Now if it was is isodynamous, uh, one would question whether it was actually to be pronounced ISO, not ISO. Okay, so already we've got a little bit of a conflict of opinion. This led me to do a little bit of research uh, into the International Organization of Standards and I went back and looked at the story of this organization and I found uh, one of the authors of the story, a, a guy called William Kurt, who goes right back to 1946 for one of the very first meetings in London. And he says he has no recollection of this word, this Greek word equivalence being used as part of their organization. Now, I don't really care whether you call it ISO or ISO. I just didn't really want you to put down in the comments section that I was pronouncing it incorrectly. I actually have to say that I only ever referred to it as ISO uh, for the first 30 years of my career. It's only recently that I've uh, come across this alternative way of um, pronouncing uh, this third most important control for exposure. Now, okay, let's, uh, without much further ado, let's go in and look at the specifics of how we can get or master control over this important aspect of exposure. Now all of the Sony cameras on the back you'll see on the right side of that control wheel we do have the word ISO or ISO and if we just uh, press that button we can go in and we can control whether we're shooting in auto ISO or ISO auto or shooting in one of the manual ISO settings. Now um, most of you will probably be shooting most of the time in ISO auto. Now, if we just move over to the right again, just press the right side of that control wheel, we can set the upper parameter and lower parameter for that matter of what auto ISO is able to access uh, when it's trying to set the exposure. Now, there is a, an opportunity to raise or lower that upper limit. Now, some people will say, well, I actually don't want to be shooting at ISO 12,800 because my images look very, very grainy. So I'm going to lower that figure. A word of warning, however, on this uh, left hand side of the screen now, you'll see an image that was captured at ISO 12800. Now it hasn't been um, processed for the noise at the moment because um, it was captured in the raw file format and we can't actually apply the, uh, the, um, the noise, high ISO noise reduction in camera with raw images. So we actually have to apply the noise reduction in post-production editing. Now on the right side you can actually see that I've processed this image and they're actually quite usable. I should also point out that I didn't have any opportunities to use uh, aperture or shutter speed to lower that ISO setting there. I'm using the maximum f1.8 aperture on this 85mm prime and if I go much below 1 100th of a second I'm going to get some subject blur. So the only way I could have captured this particular image is by using that high ISO. And with careful post-production treatment this is a commercially viable image. So let's look at uh, some other examples where I've had to use high ISO. This one, um, it's a very grey day at a racetrack and I'm having to use one two thousandth of a second to freeze these most cycles coming around the hairpin bend. Now I'm using one two thousandth of a second which I know will do that. I'm using the maximum aperture of the FE200-600 lens and that of course forces the ISO to go much higher. Now again I think um, with a little bit of noise reduction in post uh, processing this is a very usable 
usable image. Now, I think that the especially the 24 megapixel full frame sensors are actually exceptionally good with that high ISO performance. Here's another example, this time on an A7R3. And uh, again, to try and use that high um, shutter speed, the 1 2,000th of a second, it's actually pushed the ISO to 2,500. And even at 1 2,000th of a second shutter speed, we've still got some uh, subject blur, motion blur on the wings of this owl in flight. Now, I, I do have some tips and techniques uh, for people who are wanting to post-process raw images for noise reduction. For instance, this little tree frog was captured at an ISO of 5000, and I think it's um, it's exceptionally high quality. So the way I actually did this was just apply a small amount of noise reduction globally to the whole thing in the detail panel, and then I applied a lot more noise reduction um, locally to to um, the uh, out of focus bokeh areas. And those are the areas where most of the noise will be noticeable by most people. So you can really ramp up the noise reduction just away from the sharp focus of your main subject. And here is that image um, full frame uh, uh, at an ISO of 5000. And most people probably will think that it's uh, captured with an ISO value of 640 or less. And now I do cover those post-production techniques in more detail, especially for Lightroom Classic users or Lightroom CC users. Just head over and look for those masterclasses on my YouTube channel there. Now, as I said, most people are using uh, ISO Auto most of the time. So what are the reasons we need to actually uh, come out of ISO Auto and choose one of the manual ISO settings? So what I've come to here is this is uh, captured with the Alpha 6600. Now this does have a lower value as does the full frame cameras. We can go below 100. Now ISO Auto isn't capable of selecting an ISO automatically below the 100, which is the optimum uh, quality ISO of these cameras. But if we were shooting with say an f1.4 or 1.8 um, prime lens wide open on a sunny day, there's a real risk, especially on the APS-C cameras, that we're going to overexpose the brightest highlights. The shutter speed will be capped at 1 4,000th of a second, and really we need to go a little bit faster on the shutter speed or lower the ISO value in order to ensure that the brightest highlights are not overexposed. So for those people using those uh, APS-C cameras, um, just be aware that uh, you can't use those 1.4 apertures in bright sunny weather, except if you are uh, got the Alpha 6600, that does have the ISO 50 lower limit, and you can come out of ISO Auto, select that 50, and that will ensure that you do get the, um, uh, the bright highlight detail that you're looking for. Um, another reason to um, select a manual ISO, of course, is when we put the cameras on a tripod, we really don't mind that shutter speed extending out. In some instances, we actually want that to happen so we can smooth the surface ripples on the water to create a nice smooth surface. And so we are obviously going to select uh, the ISO 100. We get the optimum um, quality of the image, the least amount of noise. We also get the biggest dynamic range. This means that we've got most opportunity to capture rich detail in the darkest of shadows and the brightest of highlights. The dynamic range will come down as we start raising that ISO. We also should note that if we're shooting in the uncompressed RAW file format on the full frame cameras, we will also get a little bit extra dynamic range. Now one thing to note, uh, if we are perhaps uh, shooting in uh, manual exposure and we've selected the manual exposure on the shoot mode dial, just remember manual isn't fully manual if you're using ISO auto. You're basically still using a semi-auto um, exposure mode. So you do have to remember if you want uh, to be in fully manual mode that uh, as well as selecting uh, manual on the shoot mode dial, you also need to go into the ISO setting and select one of the uh, um, fixed ISO settings from that list there. One of the things that I should point out is there's another opportunity to use one of the manual ISO settings and that is on most of the full frame cameras 
ISO 100 is the absolute optimum quality for dynamic range and low noise but there is a sweet spot on these full frame sensors and that is uh, usually set at ISO 640. You're actually going to get a bigger dynamic range and less noise shooting at ISO 640 than you are at 400 and it's quite a, uh, it's a quite a noticeable difference. So if you are hovering around that ISO um, uh, 400 uh, or 640 it's actually best to come out of ISO Auto and select that 640. Now in the example I'm showing here I'm actually looking for the best dynamic range because we've got a white owl that's collecting a little bit of sunlight and so we need the, the biggest dynamic range that I can actually muster on this particular image. So let's go uh, in a, a little bit more detail into the ISO settings. Now we did set the upper and lower parameters on ISO Auto from the back of the camera but there is a dedicated menu setting for ISO and on the latest model cameras it's called ISO setting. If we press the uh, center button to enter that menu we'll see that's uh, subdivided into three uh, sub uh, menus there. Uh, ISO which is the, uh, the auto or um, selecting the fixed ISO. Then we've got an ISO range limit and we've got ISO auto minimum shutter speed. Now we've already set the upper and lower parameter on ISO auto from the back of the camera. So let's go uh, down to the second menu item and look at the ISO range limit. Now this is a, a source of some confusion for some users. Because we've set the upper and lower limit for ISO auto, we can actually set an upper and lower limit that we can access when we're not using ISO auto. And that is a little bit confusing if you think you've set a lower limit and then you don't access it from the uh, alternative ISO setting then that can be a little bit confusing. So if you want to be able to see ISO 50 when you're setting manual ISO you do have to use and set that at the minimum uh, in this ISO range limit and you can also set the upper limit here as well. Now the third setting ISO auto minimum shutter speed is typically used when we're using the camera in program mode or aperture priority. This gives uh, people who are um, working with the selected aperture some control over the minimum shutter speed that the camera can select. Now this is, uh, this is one of my favorite features so much so that I not only put it in my FN menu but I also put it onto the C1 key, the custom button on the top of the camera uh, because this does allow me to control the minimum shutter speed so I get the maximum control when we're working in auto exposure. So for instance um, when I'm shooting sports and I don't want the shutter speed to fall below one two thousandth of a second because I'm freezing fast action I will just set that at um, one two thousandth of a second as the minimum shutter speed and that will force the ISO to go up in order to create an appropriate exposure. Now the thing I should point out with ISO auto minimum shutter speed, it is a recommended minimum. So if the camera can achieve a faster shutter speed it will and if the camera can't achieve an appropriate exposure it will go below that one two thousandth of a second that you may have set. When I did my ISO auto minimum shutter speed uh, video tutorial a lot of people setting the cameras up in maybe their uh, offices or studios at night time couldn't work out why they couldn't achieve that one two thousandth of a second and that's simply because there wasn't enough light so the camera would lower um, the minimum shutter speed in order to achieve an appropriate exposure. One of the other settings that I will use with ISO auto minimum shutter speed is I will slow the shutter speed down. Typically the cameras when you're shooting handheld uh, are very low to go below 1 60th of a second but for people who have got um, a steady shot uh, in the cameras um, they're aware that they can actually hand hold the camera at much slower speeds thereby forcing the ISO to go lower. So this particular image was captured at 1 8th of a second as so long as I brace the camera appropriately and squeeze the shutter uh, release gently I will get a sharp image. Uh, but in order to do that with using um, aperture priority and ISO auto you do need to go into that ISO auto minimum shutter speed and select slow or slower 
or actually choose your minimum uh, shutter speed from that menu. And uh, if you're looking at uh, using uh, or utilizing steady shot in order to be able to shoot these uh, images with very slow shutter speeds, you may want to watch my steady shot um, a video tutorial there. ISO auto minimum shutter speed. This time, instead of trying just to freeze the most cycle, I'm actually trying to get some motion blur behind the most cycle. Now, you do require reasonably good panning skills to be able to do this, but in this instance, I actually um, chose a, a, an ISO auto minimum shutter speed of 1 250th of a second. The camera would only sync the, slow, uh, the shutter speed this slow if I also close the aperture down, in this instance, closing down to f11. For users of the a7R3 just be aware that you will lose your phase detect autofocus if you close that aperture down more than f8. If you're looking um, for a video tutorial about ISO auto minimum shutter speed uh, you will find one on my Alpha Creative Skills YouTube channel. So that concludes uh, my video tutorial on ISO or ISO. Uh, let's not get too upset about the pronunciation. You'd say tomato, I say tomato, uh, but we're not going to call the whole things off. Just uh, subscribe. Head over to my website if you've um, uh, if you want to download uh, free resources. Just remember, if uh, they are uh, prove valuable to you, you do always have the opportunity to make a small donation, and this basically keeps me in business, creating learning resources to support the Alpha community. Okay, thank you. I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Imaging Ambassador.